welcome to Golden Ya Hot and Air Curl Up. Where at the comfort of your seat, you will be catered with innovative self help and self love, trending information, sex storytelling, and fun tips. I am an expert on self image boosting, advisor, a skin holistic specialist, black woman motivational speaker, a mom, and a wife. I'm obsessed with helping you achieve the possibilities in living your best life. It wasn't only the virus that was making me strive, but the endless loneliness, the hunger of not being able to go anywhere, eat anywhere. The darn plague kept restaurants closed or out of business. I have gained five kilos. I've been binging on days on planet Mars, Nepal, six times from season one to 16, 12 hours straight a day. My daily routine was simply that. I had a few hours of sleep, eat my home cooked meal, which I justified for watching so much TV series. So I took the time to go out grocery shopping. So I believed that I was doing some workout. <laughs> but I took my time to eat my food, chew my food, take care of myself, my skin. Since before the pandemic, I never got to do that. I was putting on masks. I was taking longer walks and watching way too much TV. My favorite part of the day, I would set some candles in the bathroom, which were lavender dim the lights and put on the shower the temperature was just right hearing the water fall gently was so soothing i dropped my towel on the ground around my ankles and rubbed my naked body with moroccan spice cinnamon body scrub oil it made my skin feel so smooth out of my shower wall I could see outside the window. I saw a few teenagers from a bus station racing with their skateboards on the road like there are no cars driving. I haven't seen some for a very long time and the silence was deafening. You could definitely hear a pin drop if you'd listen hard enough. I can't stay sad all the time I thought to myself this morning newspapers had a interesting message it wasn't smart for me reading the news since I promised myself not to be influenced by fear but there was a certain line that intrigued me that said there is one in a billion chance that this is based on reality <laughs> we're definitely living in a matrix I stepped into the warm, steaming shower and rubbed my head full of coils, my naps, and then spread my legs salaciously as I reinserted the suggestive carrot shape like object inside my delightful little plum rose called Pussy. The phone rang annoyingly as I reached for it on the side of the bed table. The phone fell on the ground. Fuck. I had to reach down and pick it up, which annoyed me. I wasn't fully awake yet, but I knew by the hours that it was eight minutes after four. When I finally picked it up, I had missed my call. Who can it be at this freaking hour? I am not a vampire. I pressed my phone on standby and felt the sharp white light hurt my sleepy eyes. The call was from my employer. I called immediately back. I truly wished he wouldn't pick up. But the truth of the matter is, if horses were wishes, beggars would ride. Yes, morning, Nova. Good morning, sir. Did I wake you up? Some people dream of success, while other people get up every morning and make it happen. Which one are you? 
Darn it, I thought. It was way too early for such deep riddles. I quickly said, No, sir, you haven't woke me. I am definitely the one that makes it happen. I tried to conceal my tiredness. Very well. I need you to be at the conference in two hours. The prototype case, Papito 408, is being presented by Mira, and I need you to assist her. I'll also be considering which one of you will get a senior position head consumer division. So make sure you prove to me why you should deserve the position instead of your colleague. Is that understood? Before I could reply, yes, sir, he had hung up. That man is so obnoxious, but a brilliant innovator. I tossed my phone in frustration on the bed and stared at the ceiling. It started raining. The soothing sound, the smell from the cinnamon Moroccan, Moroccan scrub that was still on my body, thinking how this October was quite warm and how pleasant it was. I was definitely in the mood for Halloween parties. Crickets chirping so loud in the light rain definitely brought a creepy but beautiful atmosphere. Oh God, this is the perfect time to sleep. The rain was so gently kicking on my window. The sound in my bed covers felt so satisfying. Just listen. The mirror popped in my head. My colleague, he said, Mira will be representing the conference and that I was asked to assist her. Oh, how I hated that. That job position is mine. I mean, she has been here like, what, three years? That's freaking nothing compared to the 11 years I have sacrificed for this company, toiled for this company, given my best effort and being a... I had to be twice as good. Two steps ahead, sometimes even five. Though appreciation was shown, I needed a freaking break. How ironic. We were in a pandemic, so I was home all the time. That shameless little twat took credit where it was not due. Mostly my credit. So that job was mine, and I was going to do anything to get it. Still staring at the ceiling. It was 11 years ago when I walked into that office. 11 November, 11 after 11. Like a doll walking in my Louboutins, clicking on the marble floor with a too tight dress. How easy it is for men to simply wear a suit and loafers. And I had to be in this expensive shoe, walking seductively, so uncomfortable to my job interview. I was then greeted by the assistant. Oh, Miss Boating Nova. I rolled my eyes slightly at her. It's pronounced Boating. I <laughs> apologize. Miss Boating Nova, Miss Ney will see you now. As I walked past her, smiling favorably sweet but fake, as she returned the same. Mrs. Ney extended a hand and shook me firmly and showed me to my seat. The office decor made me feel overexcited. The luscious design, the exquisite taste gave me a sense of belonging to this office this space because of the truth of the matter i am a wealthy black woman and i deserve this career i reminded myself i am receptive to abundance prosperity i am grateful i am financially provided for i stay positive I am worthy of having my desires and my needs to be met. And this was a need part of my desire, this career, this office. Mrs. Ney spoke sitting across me in her oversized oval table. Yes, I see that you have a major degree in development management. How long did you have that experience in that field and what were your tasks? I answered in veracity and excitement. For three years, I was senior team managing director for Bendel & Sons and a coordinator. 
I did it all with integrity, made a lot of friends and closed a lot of deals. When I look back, I look at it as a self-fulfilled years of experience and opportunity. I was fortunate enough to be part of the internship while at university. I have a major portfolio at Bendel and Sus. I added this with my resume. I smiled wide at my accomplishments and I saw in her face that she was impressed. But then she picked up her ball pen and pointed it above my eyes. So they permitted you walking around the company with that. I was confused. With what? Your hair like that. My full teeth smile dropped in shock, embarrassment. I tried to control my emotions. I mean, don't get me wrong. It looks beautiful, exotic, almost like you're a queen of a plant tree jungle. <laughs> she tried to control her laugh. She continued. An executive position like this, you see, you need to be looking the part, as in part of the professional company we are. Like mine, tucked in neatly, I was besides myself. Really? People like you make me sick, but now I'm not tired. I actually have time. Queen of a plant tree fucking jungle? Are you fucking kidding me? This is 2002. She gasped at my reaction. I have achieved so much in life that average woman like you will be honored to be in my presence of excellence. My afro is a crown that proves that. Do you understand that, Karen? She looked at me confused, not knowing who I was talking about. Karen who? She stood up and backed up towards the corner of a wall and replied quickly, You're so aggressive. Could you leave my office? Those words out of her mouth turned everything in front of me red. I walked towards her with my fist clenched in anger. My body tight, enraged, deranged, out of my mind. I stopped so close to her and stood straight in front of her face. But she looked and bothered at me and then turned and took beside us to my shock something squishy from a cabinet an object it was a pink candy cotton people like you also need attention right take this cotton candy doesn't it look like your hair type leave this building <laughs> she said confident and smiling i grabbed her by the head pulling her ash blonde hair Turning her to the wall, took the damn cotton candy from her hand, held her shoulder, and bashed her whole face <laughs> into the wall. Bitch. In full adrenaline. You again. Bitch. Again. You again. You and again. Bitch. I didn't even hear you her bitch. forehead skull you cracking. Bitch. Again. I bashed her head. Her face caved in. All that remained from where her face used to be was part of a brain organ called the cerebellum being supported by the spinal cord bone her whole face was gone behind me i heard the door open i turned around swiftly to see her secretary and the security man staring at me in disturbance and shock i dropped the dead body on the ground feeling tired now the adrenaline rush was subsiding inside me. I was still holding the cotton candy like a balloon next to my fro hair covered in blood and brain matter of Mrs. Nay. Could you point me to the bathroom, please? I said with a voice trembling towards the security guard and the secretary who looked at me, dazed and certainly scared. My mind brought me back to reality. And I was sitting in front of Mrs. Nay as she repeated the question about my hair. You're up in the rings now. Could I count on you with the hair matter? I took a deep breath and reluctantly said, of course. Outside the building, I said to myself, it's a good darn thing. All dreams and visions don't come true. At least I got hired at the International Holding Company 
and laboratory of H. Cranome. Wow, thank you Golden Nutchies for listening to Golden Ya yeah, Hot Air and Curl Up where we'll be sharing interesting stories or spicy ones, relationship, self-love in form of affirmations. You'll also be getting amazing interviews from people with real life incorrigible experiences or experts. My initial goal is to bring our community together anywhere you are in the world you're very welcome my email is beautyshophgoldenya at gmail.com if you have suggestions or information articles stories you would like me to share on they're very welcome please make sure you subscribe rate and comment this episode on any podcast you come across Thank you. (laughs) Love, peace, and coconut water.